Good morning. Happy Good morning, Sunday. Ego. She's like, ah, wait for it. Happy Sunday. Glad that you guys are tuning in with us today. We are Adam and Morgan, your online host. Glad that you are joining us. So glad. For church today. All the best place to be. It is the best place to be. Gladness. That sounds um, like a name. Gladys. Gladys. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> hey, if your name is Gladys, jump in the chat and tell us. Yeah, okay? we're super excited that yeah, you're we're here. Yeah, we're extra excited. If your name is Gladys. Um, if you're tuning in, there's a variety of ways that you're doing that. And we tell you that because maybe you're traveling one day and you go, we like you're to, like. We like to hit all of the options. Just like we say which states and countries are tuning in, we want to make sure that all of our platforms are hit as well. Yes. Freedomhouse.cc slash live. Thank our you. YouTube just stole page my line, boy. And Facebook. Well, usually you're like, I don't remember. But you then you do remember. Then I do remember. Every single time. No, not every time, not every Most time. Most of the time. Um, these lights, guys, the <laughs> like, feel like super. We need ah. to get the tan. Yeah, Maybe hi it's just highlighter. us. Highlighter arm. It's just us. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're tuning in on any of those platforms, please say hello. That's right. Jump in the chat. We want to hear where you're tuning in from. Love to see that. People from all over the world saying hey. Because That's this right. is our online lobby. We want to not and just be. And there are be, people. I said we don't want to just be talking. No, because we, we will have people just talk, back. talk. Which happens in the real lobby, too, because if you're more quiet, I guess who's talking a lot? Me! I just ask questions. I'm like, how was your week? No, and he I has a, and this stare. is a quality that I admire. He has a lot of knowledge Tell me. about. Tell me what you admire. You have a lot of knowledge about random things. I do. But what that makes that great is he can be in any conversation, at least have an idea to be able to contribute. Like, if you're talking about m car motors... I am not going to be able to have a long conversation with you. <laughs> if you're talking about South American bugs, I'm not going to be like here's I'm going to be interested and I'll ask. But She's going to be I don't way know. more excited than I will be, which is great. Um, but I make up for my lack of enthusiasm with ex knowledge. Ex uh, my showing of enthusiasm. Because I'm excited. I just don't always show it as well as Morgan does. Um, but with knowledge, and if I can find something, even if I have just a hint of it. We can have a conversation. Yeah, and I love that about you. Um, okay, jump in the chat, people. I'm in the YouTube one. Where I got are you? Uh, our website pulled up. And so I have a question <clears throat> for the people. Okay. And for you, because this I'm is something ready. that we run into from time to time. So say you're going on a trip. You to and South some, America. You and some to friends. visit the bugs. <laughs> Don't, man, there's some crazy I tried to tie there. that together with the last story. Go ahead. Go <laughs> canoeing down the Amazon rainforest. Um, so Not me. You and your family, you and some friends <laughs> are, are going on a trip. Like a, a lengthy trip, like a five day, five day, five Set day trip. Tone. Okay. Here's the question: Are you packing ahead of time, or are you like a last minute packer? I want to answer for you, and I want you to answer for me. Okay. You go first about All me. All right. So answer about you. Yeah. So. So we've done these trips. We have done these trips. Long trips. So a couple of things that I've noticed over the years. About me. Yes. I think you will start thinking about outfits and packing earlier than me 100 percent. but then you are very last minute on some things really? like cleaning the house we will be I like going out the that's door. true and i'm like trash can and i'm like we <laughs> have to go and she's like no i need the house clean for when i come back which is totally which valid. i don't want to clean in advance but i do pack in advance in fact especially if we're going on a trip that has like there's there's a moments of you need to have the right outfit. Right, we're gonna, it's not casual. Going to a, a wedding and we're gonna have a. a or we're going. We've done conference like gone had the opportunity to go to conferences and it's like okay you're gonna need this certain type of outfit. Absolutely, I take photos. Yeah, she does. And I put them together so that when I'm there, She's I don't have to think about photos, it. Which I rejected at first, but it did come in handy. It came in major <laughs> handy. Okay, so he will pack last minute. But Just we've been packing like, because, guys, any week now, this could be happening. So we packed a bag, go, and we're very ready on that. Oh, man. We're so ready. We're so ready for this baby. All we need is for hey, him to everyone, show up. Okay. And, uh, we got, uh, we got but we've got the bag back. We got the bag <laughs> packed. We got snacks. We because got I don't want to be books. caught off guard, guys. This is my first time on this experience. You know what I'm saying? So which, I'm like, which, let's so, be prepared. I, I go, like, super in-depth on stuff. I, like, nerd out on this. Yeah, it's been great, though. And so, but I would say I would say your packing is last minute. So we can and then, last minute and then he's like, the, the, wait, last thing. we got 40 seconds. Last thing will be this. This is all I have, Morgan. I, I don't have oh, a solid T-shirt. This is the worst. I'm like, you I'm need, like, where's a solid T-shirt with that? Like that would look great. She's like picking out outfits for me to go into this dinner or whatever. And she's like, well, you need to pack this. I'm like, yeah, I you need don't a nicer pair of shoes. Of clothing. And I'm like, well, we have to go get those shoes. And I'm like, that's not an option right now. And then we do go get them. Remember when one we time before, we went to the yes. store? Because I was like, you need a pair of white solid sneakers. Oh man, it was sneakers. it was stressful. Anyway, how do you pack? How do you pack? Are you, Are you early? Last minute? You uh, packing? Uh, 
if you're going at the, like the end of the month, are you packing now or are you like night before? Oh, I got to do all the laundry. Very interesting. Think We're very different. It. Hey, it's going to be a great day. Enjoy service. It's going to be awesome. Pastor Diana's here. Enjoy services. Yeah. Freedom House, good morning. What a beautiful day to be in God's house. Amen. Let's put our hands together and worship Him today. Come on. Woo. Just think about it for a moment. Because of Jesus, we can walk straight to the throne room, straight to him. There's nothing that we have to do other than humble our hearts and just say, Jesus, we are here for you. As we sing this next song, let this be your invitation just to come before him and give him the praise due his name.
take a moment to focus our eyes and our attention on Jesus, the author and perfecter, the finisher of our faith. To take a moment to give him praise today, just in your own words, just thank him, exalt him, glorify him for the holy God he is. 
the fact that we would get to be in his presence, in the presence of a holy God when we, the Bible says, our sins are as filthy rags. But because of the righteousness of Jesus, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we can be in his presence. You know, I remember at 23 years old when I came to the Lord and my life was in shambles and I was a just messed up young girl who needed healing, who needed a father, who needed a touch, who needed restoration, who needed redemption, who needed vision for what life could be like when you follow Jesus. I needed forgiveness. There were so many things I needed. I remember just receiving that healing. I remember walking the aisle to receive Jesus for the first time, starting a relationship with him and all the cleanup and the restoration process and the healing process. You know, sometimes it's a process. But there are also times where Jesus just wants to touch our heart, touch our mind, touch our spirit and free us of whatever it is we're battling. And I believe that that can happen in this house today. There is healing in the house today. I am declaring that in Jesus' mighty name. I wanna go ahead and invite our leaders down because we'll provide an opportunity for prayer for you guys. You know, our, our hearts and our minds can sometimes get in the way of what God really wants to do. I learned a long time ago, my greatness did not put God on the throne. My weakness can't take him off of it. But that greatness, that pride, that arrogance can keep me from receiving all that he has for me. Because I think I can do everything on my own, right? I don't know if anybody else feels that way in the room sometimes, but we just, I got this. I don't need God's influence in this. But then there's the opposite too, where our weaknesses feel like that it removes ourselves out of his presence. I'm not worthy enough to come into his presence and receive everything he has for us. Maybe my worry, my fear. God, I'm not worthy. I'm just not worthy. But I'm here to tell you today that it's time to remove the mindset. It's time to change the posture of your heart because we're in a healing series right now and I want you to be at a level of expectancy that you've never had before for what God can do in your life. And so in this moment, I want you to do three things. I want you to take a little bit of inventory. And I want you to recognize, number one, where you're at in your mindset and where your heart is. Then I want you to come to the altar and pray with one of these leaders and release whatever that is. And then I want you to be in the posture of receiving whatever God has for you today. He can do it all. He can, he's the God of the impossible. Yes. We're surrounded by holy right now, and he wants to move in your life. Yes. Yes. So right now, Heavenly Father, I just pray you open our eyes. Give us revelation. Let us recognize what it is in our lives that's keeping us from experiencing everything that you have for us, Lord. Let's bring down those barriers today, God. Let us open our eyes so we can see you and how we're surrounded by you, how your love is for us. I pray that we do that right now as we continue to worship. Heavenly Father, be here with us. Let your Holy Spirit just move across this room, across the people that are online with us. Lord, I know you're omnipresent. You're everywhere, God. And I thank you for being right here, enveloped in our praises, God. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue to worship, get out of your seat and come and receive prayer. Let's continue to worship. When did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? 
How did I start to believe you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? Cause you are more than able. Do you believe it this morning?
everywhere you're standing right underneath your feet being holy ground we don't have to take off our shoes like they did in the Bible but we can recognize the ground that we're standing on we can recognize the territory that God has given us and we can ask him to expand it and I believe he's gonna do that today I'm excited just from what I'm seeing all over the room and the Holy Spirit is just getting started on all he asks for is a willing yielded heart and maybe we just hold up our hands right now and we surrender Jesus this is our sign our physical sign of just surrendering God maybe what we're comfortable with maybe what we thought it could look like maybe we're surrendering surrendering our religion our ideas maybe those are the prison doors that need to fling open wide today and Jesus, we're believing you for it. Come on, church. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. I'm so excited. So excited. Worship doesn't end here, okay? If you are a guest with us, a special welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. Welcome home. Welcome to Freedom House. Our senior pastors have a special welcome just for you. So before you're seated, turn to your left, turn to your right, maybe meet someone brand new, and then turn your attention toward the screens. Hey everybody, we are Troy and Penny Maxwell, your senior pastors right here at Freedom House. Our mission here is to equip people to experience Christ's freedom in their everyday lives. We are one house with many rooms. So welcome to everyone at our Central, South End, and Lake Norman campuses. And also to those of you who are watching through our online experience at our online campus. And if today is your first time here, we are fired up to have you with us. We love to get to know you. So tap the button on the back of the seat in front of you with your phone and follow the prompts on the screen. Then stop by Guest Central after service because we've set aside a special gift just for you. So here's a look at what's coming up here at Freedom House. Water baptism is an outward expression of an inward commitment to follow Jesus. And we want to celebrate you being made free through baptism. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we are made free. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus, this is your personal invitation to make a public declaration through water baptism and begin to walk in the new life you've been given through Jesus. Baptisms are next Sunday at Central Campus, so don't wait another minute to be made free and register today at freedomhouse.cc baptism. 
This spring, we are setting the table for those who are new to the church and ready to make Freedom House home. Our next Get On Track membership lunch is on Sunday, May 5th, right after second service at all campuses. Come enjoy lunch with our campus pastors and leadership team as we share the history and vision of Freedom House. This is your opportunity to connect, grow, and hear about how you can use your gifts to serve in God's house. Head on over to freedomhouse.cc slash membership to RSVP, and we'll see you May 5th. Hey guys, May the 4th is our next strong breakfast, and I cannot wait. One of my best friends, Pastor Marcus Meekum from Seven Hills Church in Ohio will be with us. He will bring an amazing word to lift all of us men up, take us to the next level. You know, we only bring the best to speak here at Freedom House. So get ready to be challenged, build community, and be the man God has called you to be. So I want you to go to freedomhouse.cc slash strong. I want you to buy a ticket for yourself. I want you to buy a ticket for your friend. I want you to buy a ticket for your dad, your brother, your coworker, your enemy. Buy a ticket for everybody. Bring them, register right now. We'll see you May the 4th. For all of this and more, tap the button on the back of the seat in front of you with your phone or download the Freedom House app. Well, hello, Freedom House. It is so good to be in God's house, isn't it? Well, hey, my name is Michael Ott. I serve on our FH Kids team here at Freedom House. And in this moment, we want to continue worshiping God as we honor Him with our finances, as we receive tithes and offerings. Now, the tithe is the first 10% of our gross income that God asks us to return to Him in an offering. Well, that's any amount that we commit to give that is over and above the tithe. And here at Freedom House, we work hard to make giving very easy. In fact, to give online, it's actually getting easier. You see, all you have to do is pull out your phone, unlock it, and tap that decal that you see right there on the seat in front of you to give. Now, if you want to, you can also use the giving envelope that's there in the seat back pocket as well to give by cash or check. And you're going to take that offering and you're going to place it in the giving boxes that are located out in the lobby after service. Now, here at Freedom House, once a year, we take up a special one-time offering that we call Liberty. And it's during that time that we come together as a church. We pray, we believe, we give big, injecting funds into specific areas of the church that help us to, to bridge the gap where we currently are and where we see God calling us. And you see, it's through our Liberty offering that we're able to accelerate the vision through four specific objectives. The first objective is that we're going to purchase a 15-passenger vehicle in order to transport our Lake Norman students, those through the 7th and 12th grades, so that they're able to come from that area to here on a Sunday night to enjoy our vertical service. Yeah. Awesome. The next is we want to purchase a sound system for our soon coming South Charlotte campus. The third is to purchase a motorized gate to purchase and to install it at South End, right? And then the fourth and the final one is to uh, have a, a first class um, playground for our Freedom Academy kids. Now that's pretty exciting stuff, but you know what? It's only gonna get better for here because I've got some great updates for you on two of those objectives. The first one being this, and since we're coming very close to the end of our 30-day commitment, it's important that you get excited about this. The first objective is this, the one we're talking about, the motorized gate for South End. Well, guess what? It's taken care of. It's a done deal. Cross it off the list. One down, three to go. The next one is this one. The 15-passenger van was purchased on Friday. Take a look at that. Do you see that video there? There's some video that is actually from this past Friday where it was actually purchased. They drove it off a lot. As a result of that, man, we've got young people that are going to be able to come, build relationship, get to know God even better. And Freedom House, you know why that's happening? Because of your generosity. Give yourself a hand. That's so awesome. Man. But I also want to give you an update on how much has come in and how much we're still believing for. Now, Freedom House, get a load of this. Because of your generosity, you've given $175,196. Give yourself a hand. Our vertical youth, they had a car wash 
they were able to contribute $1,300. Give yourself a hand. And we know that there's many of you that also took advantage of the 30-day commitment, and you've committed to $42,994. So that leaves us roughly with $90,100 that we're still believing for in order to fully fund the vision. And that makes the grand total $309,590, man. Now, Freedom House, with the faith that is in this room, we can do this. I said with the faith that's in this room, can we do this? Yes, we know we can do this. Now, here's the thing. It was back in March on the 17th on that Sunday. We received our Liberty offering, but we also extended that 30-day commitment to give time for people to have time to able to give towards that vision. We know many of you were waiting on things for maybe a tax refund, maybe for a bonus, or maybe for something to sell that God put on your heart to give towards the vision. We want to encourage you to, to follow whatever God's put on your heart and make sure that you follow through with that. But we also want to remind you that this Tuesday is the end of the 30-day commitment. We want you to understand we're, we're standing, we're believing with you, and we're cheering you on so that you can finish your commitment strong. Now, I don't know about you, but man, that is a lot of exciting stuff that's going on here. Maybe, maybe you haven't been in Freedom House in a while. Maybe you haven't had the opportunity to get involved on this. But like I said earlier, we're still believing for the $90,100 to come in to fund that vision fully. And this is the place where you can still get involved. It's not too late for you. Again, all you have to do is take out your phone, unlock it, tap that decal on the seat in front of you, and you can give that way. Or if you prefer, you can actually go to our website, freedomhouse.cc slash liberty and you can give there. Now, as I'm closing, I just want to say something from my heart to you. I've had the, the great privilege and honor to stand here ever so often and, and just share in generosity with you all. But over the last several years that I've had this opportunity to do this, you know what I've seen? Every single time, Freedom House, when there's a crisis, you stand up to meet the challenge. When there is a need, you come through again to meet that need. Freedom House, I'm just in awe of your generosity that every single time you open up your heart and you let God move through you to give to worthy things that build people's lives, that build God's kingdom. You see, it's because of your generosity that children, youth, young adults, families, are impacted in not only this church, but all across this city and around the region. And from the bottom of my heart, and I sure for this entire ministry, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment to prepare to give and let's pray. Father, we're just in all of you that when we ask you are there to supply. Lord, we're asking you. We're, some of us are still believing for what you've placed on our heart. Father, we're going to keep believing, knowing that you are faithful to perform your word and that nothing, none of your words fall to the ground. But you bring them to pass, Father, and we know that you are able to fill our hands with seed. We're willing to let it go into the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Father, that as we give Lord God, it will increase your kingdom. It will bring hundreds and thousands into the kingdom of God because this is your heart. This is what you died for. And Lord, we thank you that, that we're able to give. You have yet provided again for us. And so with gladness, with joy, we give our tithe. We give our offering because you have given us so much more. We thank you for it, Lord. Bless these tithes and offering today. Bless every giver, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. And everybody said, amen. Thank you so very much, and enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. 
And by his stripes, we are healed. What is up, Freedom House? So great to see you guys today. Man, it is hopping in here today, isn't it? Can you just feel the presence of God like all over the place? Man, it is rich for him to move in a mighty way. So I'm excited. I'm expectant. Our campus pastors, Pastor Stephanie, Pastor Aaron, can we give it up for them? They did a great job setting the stage literally for the presence of God to move. Man, it's going to be good. Sorry. Okay. My name is Diana Henderson. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, I hail from our South Charlotte South End campus. Came all the way up here today. Excited to be with you guys today. If you're new, we do things a little differently. We're one house with many rooms. So we've got the South End campus, Central where you are. We also have our Lake Norman campus and we have an online campus. So if you're ever traveling, don't be missing church because we live stream every Sunday. In fact, we've got people joining with us today. We've got people from Thailand, Peru, Florida, Maryland, Virginia, South Carolina, New Jersey, Georgia, Tennessee, Ohio, Illinois, and New York. Can we give it up for our online family? Glad you guys are with us today. We also do things a little differently in the sense that we have a teaching team. So we have a live communicator at every single one of our campuses, at every service, every single weekend to make sure you get a live word of God. Now that's a vision that's unique to Freedom House that God gave to our senior pastors. And I like to say our senior pastors are like Paul fanning the flames of the gifts on the inside of each one of us. You see, they believe that we have gifts to help build God's kingdom, and so they fan those flames so that we help to to get to be a part in building God's kingdom. Isn't that awesome? Can we give honor where honor is due and give it up for our senior pastors, Troy and Penny Maxwell? They are absolutely awesome. All right, well, guys, we're going to dive in today because i got a lot to cover, and we've already covered that the Spirit of the Lord is rich in here, so we're going to get moving. We're in a series right now called By His Stripes, and this series is all about what the Bible has to say about sickness, disease, and healing. We're going to answer some of those tough questions in this series that you might have around healing. Tough questions like, is healing for everyone? Tough questions like, how do I receive my healing? Or maybe, if I haven't received my healing yet, what is that going to look like? Maybe you have a question about where sickness comes from. We're going to unpack all of that in this series this month. And I want to encourage you, don't be missing church. You want to come every Sunday to make sure that you hear the message so that you can understand exactly what the Bible has to say. Now, we do record all of our messages. They're available on YouTube and iTunes. You can go back and watch. But make sure you're here because there's something really radical about being in the presence of God. You know, sickness does not come from God. In fact, in the original garden, before Adam and Eve disobeyed, sickness was not even in existence. And then they disobeyed sickness and came onto the scene through sin. And then we have been in a fallen world ever since. It's been this epic battle ever since. It's part of the curse. The common cold, diabetes, cancer, none of it comes from God. And so I want to really encourage you to lean in. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Maybe you've never heard my story, but God radically healed my son 13 years ago in utero. We received a diagnosis that he had a heart condition and that he was likely to be Down syndrome. Now we knew that that was not God's plan for our son. But I have to be honest that we didn't fully understand what the Bible has to say about healing. And so God took us on a journey, a process to really understand what the scriptures have to say about healing. It's kind of like an insurance policy. You may not know what's in it 
until you have a claim, and then you're going to be studying up, right, to understand what's in it. Well, that was the case for us with healing. And I want to share with you, we've got two resources that we've paired with our series this month that will really help you understand exactly what the Bible has to say. You'll see a picture of those here on the screen. We've got Christ the Healer by F.F. Bosworth and then Healing the Sick by T.L. Osborne. Both are incredible resources. I would encourage you to pick up a copy of those, not only for your benefit, but if you buy that from our Salt Resource Center, the proceeds go to missions and outreach. So it's a double whammy. Why would you not, right? All right, guys, we are going to dive in, and we're going to talk today about the ways and the methods in which God heals. The ways and the methods in which God heals. And I'm going to first talk about the ways. And as I do that, I want to I help you understand how we are designed so that you can understand how God heals us. We are a spirit. We live in a body. And we have a soul. We are a three-part being. I want you to say that with me because if you say it with your own mouth, you're going to learn it better. Say, I am a spirit. I live in a body. And I have a soul. Let's do it one more time. I am a spirit. I live in a body. And I have a soul. Good job. Now, our soul is further made up of three parts. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Won't you say that with me one time, too? Say, my soul is my mind, my will, and my emotions. All right, so why am I saying this? Because we are a three-part being, our healing comes in three parts. Our healing comes physically, healing in our bodies. Our, our healing comes emotionally through our soul, mind, will, and emotions. But our healing also comes spiritually. Now, I've heard this misnomer. People will say, it is, you know, if it's God's will, I will be healed. Well, how about we read his will to find out what it says so we can answer that question. Y'all with me? Okay. It was prophesied over 700 years before Jesus' birth that Jesus would heal us in those three ways, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So let's read what God's will has to say. Isaiah 53, verse 3. It says, he is despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs. Turn to somebody next to you and say, griefs. And he carried our sorrows. Turn to the other person and say, sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Somebody shout transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Somebody shout iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. I'm sorry. That is God's will. In the scripture it says, can we say it again? By his stripes we are healed. Okay. Answered one of those questions. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every single one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. All right. We're going to unpack what the scripture says. Because it's easy to study the scripture in the English. But if you go back to the original language in which the scripture was written, you understand what these words mean. I'm going to go back doctrinally to the Hebrew to unpack some of these words so that we can truly grasp what it means in God's will for us to be healed. Y'all okay with this? It's going to feel like Bible class for just a minute, but I can promise you it's worth it. All right. We said Jesus heals us physically. What does he heal us physically of? Sickness, disease, and illness. The scripture says Jesus was acquainted with our grief. That word grief in the Hebrew is the word koli. It literally translates to sickness, disease, and illness. Now, Jesus didn't 
experience sickness, illness, and disease himself because he was God in the flesh. He was perfect. But I once heard that his sympathy was so intense that he could literally feel what it felt like when we experience sickness, disease, and illness. It says that he's borne our griefs. That word born means to carry away, to substitute. In other words, when Jesus hung on the cross, he took with him your sickness, your disease, and illness. So if he bore it, why in the world are we still doing it today? We were not called to bear sickness and disease and illness because Jesus took it. Now maybe you're in here today. And you're experiencing some sort of a physical ailment. Maybe you're struggling with Crohn's disease or some sort of sickness or disease. God wants to heal you through what Jesus did. The second way Jesus heals us is emotionally. And he heals us emotionally of our pain, our grief, and our anguish. The scripture says Jesus carried our sorrows. And that word sorrows in the Hebrew is the word ka'av. And it literally translates to pain, grief, and to anguish. Now it's referring to physical pain as well as emotional pain. Because we can experience physical pain, right? Anyone ever step on a Lego before? <laughs> that is pain like I can't even describe. That's physical pain, right? Now, emotional pain, we've experienced emotional pain too. If you've ever lost someone that you care about, that is emotional pain. That word ka'av in the scriptures, the very first time that it was used, it was referencing physical pain. The pain, in fact, that a man would experience after circumcision. Now, I do not profess to know what that feels like, but I'm sure it's kind of like stepping on a Lego. Them feel good. And the emotional pain, the second time that word ka'av was used in the scripture, God was referring to it in the book of Exodus when the people, the Israelites, were under slavery. They were, they were experiencing anguish and oppression from the Egyptian leadership. So we experience emotional pain. Maybe you're in here today and you've got some emotional trauma some anxiety. God wants to heal you through what Jesus did. The third way is spiritually. And he heals us spiritually of our transgressions and our iniquities. That word transgression, it says he was wounded for our transgression. It's the word pesha in the Hebrew, which translates to rebellion or a breach of trust. We are all rebellious. And transgression, think about it this way, is the literal act of sinning. It's when you tell a lie, when you betray, when you commit murder, that's a transgression. The word iniquity, it says he was bruised for our iniquities. It's the word avon in the Bible, and it translates to blame or guilt. So if transgression is the act of sinning, Iniquity is that icky feeling that you get on the inside as a result of committing that sin. Does that make sense? And one way to, to really learn it is it says that the, in the scriptures that he was bruised for our iniquity. What's a bruise? It's bleeding underneath the surface. So that feeling of, of shame or guilt that we get on the inside, that's what that's referring to. Y'all doing okay? Okay. Okay, the last word I want to unpack is the word healed. It's the word rafa, and it means completely healed and repaired. By his stripes, we are completely repaired. Why by his stripes? Back in the biblical times, they would use this form of punishment where they would take a whip it was called a cat of nine tails. It had strips of leather. And in each of those strips of leather were shards of bone or broken pieces of pottery that were embedded in that leather. And they would whip someone. And those leather pieces with the, the pottery would tear away flesh from the bone. 
It was grotesque. It was gruesome. Most times when somebody experienced that form of punishment, they were left totally unrecognizable. In fact, the scripture says that after Jesus bore those stripes for us, he was unrecognizable. Why am I talking about something so gruesome? Because I believe it's so important for us to understand that Jesus did that for you, that he did that for me. He paid that price so that we could be healed totally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually today. Now, maybe you're sitting here going, okay, that's cool. That happened when Jesus was living, but he's not here anymore, Pastor D, in case you didn't notice. Well, uh, actually... He said something to his disciples really profoundly. He said to them before he went to the cross, before he descended into hell to pull back the keys, before he ascended into heaven, he said this to them in John chapter 14, verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Then he says, and greater works than these will he do. These are Jesus' words, red letter words, my friends. He said, I'm going away and I'm empowering you with the same authority that I carry. Can I get an amen in here? Jesus said, you will do greater than me because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask for in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Healing is absolutely accessible today. And even though Jesus doesn't stand here in the flesh, the same authority that raised him from the dead now resides on the inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can operate in this power. So guys, if you don't notice, I'm stirring your spirits right now because I believe we're going to see some radical things today. All right, let's talk about the methods. God has different methods in which he uses to heal. I kind of, I liken it to a pitcher who has different pitches. A pitcher might have a fastball. Pitcher might have a curveball, maybe a slider. What are some of the other ones? Knuckleball, change up, okay. Well, God has different methods in which he uses to heal. And we're going to talk about a very comprehensive list, but it is by no means exclusive. Y'all ready? The first one I want to talk about is physical touch and laying on of hands. Physical touch and laying on of hands. In Luke chapter 4, verse 40, it says, When the sun was setting, all those that were sick with various diseases were brought to him, Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them and he healed them. Can you imagine how intimate this was? People are bringing crowds up to Jesus and he's touching each one of them, laying hands on them, probably making eye contact, maybe using their name, and he was healing them. He modeled this. For believers, he modeled this for the disciples. He laid on hands and he healed people. Well, then in Mark chapter 16, Jesus issues the great commission to all believers. And what does he say? He says, go and make disciples of the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he says in verse 18, he says that they, believers, would lay hands on the sick and the sick would recover. So he said, do as I do. Do what I've just modeled for you. You know, last year I was at the chiropractor. And it was like a typical day. I go into the chiropractor. I'm laying on the table waiting for my crack and adjustment. Man, that's the best feeling. And my chiropractor comes in. She loves Jesus too. And she said, Pastor D, there's a woman in the next room and she is dealing with some really rough stuff. Would you come and pray with her? And I said, absolutely. So I walk into the room and I see this woman, like early 20s. She's laying on the table and she's like, her skin is discolored. She's frail and feeble, maybe 80 pounds. I introduce myself and I 
kneeled down beside her. She told me her name was Hannah. And I said, Hannah, would you like to be healed today? And she said, desperately. I said, okay, well, your husband and I, because he was in the room too, I said, we're going to lay hands on you and declare healing. But before we do so, I want to make sure you understand where healing comes from. I said, do you know who Jesus is? She said, I've heard of him. I said, well, let me tell you. Over 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross. He paid a price so that your sins would be forgiven and that you would not have to suffer emotionally or physically anymore. I said, do you believe that he did that for you? Tears are coming out of her eyes. And she said, yes. I said, great. Now we can lay hands and we can declare healing. So her husband and I laid hands. We prayed over her. And I believe right then and there she was healed. And Hannah left the office that day totally and completely full of joy. God showed up. One of the methods that God uses to heal is laying on of hands. Another method that he uses is instantaneously. Instantaneously. In Matthew chapter 8, there was a centurion, a military leader, whose servant had fallen sick to the point of death. And so he calls for this man, Jesus, who he's heard can heal. And he says, please heal my servant. Jesus says, you want me to show up and come to your house? But the servant says, I'm not even worthy for you to step under my roof, but merely say the word and I know my servant will be healed. The scripture says that Jesus marveled at this centurion's faith. Can you imagine And the scripture then says in verse 13, Jesus says, go, let it be done just as you believed. And in that moment, his servant was healed instantly. Sometimes God will heal instantly. Sometimes it's a process of time. That woman, Hannah, that day that we prayed over her, I believe God healed her in that moment. But it was two months later that she called me to say, my symptoms are totally and completely gone. Jesus healed me is what she said. Amazing. Amazing. Sometimes God heals instantly. Sometimes it's a process of time. Another method that God uses is anointing with oil. Anointing with oil. In James chapter 5, verse 14, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in, sorry, I can't hear you. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. All right, let's unpack this because there's a lot here in the scripture. First, it says, is anyone sick? Does that say an exclusive group of people? No, last time I checked, the word anyone means anyone. So healing is for anyone. That scripture also says elders. Who are the elders of the church? The leaders. Where are my leaders at in here? Raise your hand. Wave it wet like you, you know, wave it quick. Yeah, there you go. They're my leaders. It's talking about leaders. Why did it say leaders? Because in a leader, there's a maturity of faith. There's a presence of faith that has done battle. It's saying go to the leaders because I know there's going to be a presence of mature faith. Why oil? It's a physical act representing a spiritual truth. We anoint with oil as a physical act representing a spiritual truth in faith. We are to anoint with oil. It's a consecrated practice that allows the Lord to move in a really powerful way. Last year, one of our dear friends from our South End campus calls us, and she tells us that she got a bad report from her regular colonoscopy. The doctor said they found a tumor. And they said, listen, from our experience, these types of tumors are always cancerous. So they started planning out surgery. They're planning out chemo treatment, radiation. They're like, you're going to need to come in so we can map all this out. 
She calls us, and what did we do? We grabbed our oil, and we hopped in the car to go to her house and anoint her, lay hands, and pray, because that's what the Bible says. And so we did that. We're praying over her for like 30 minutes, and then she goes, okay, stop. I'm healed. And we're like, okay, all right. She calls the doctor to say, hey, listen, I'm not going to need the surgery and all that stuff because I'm healed miraculously. The doctor was like, um, so we're going to need you to come in and verify that. (laughs) We need to check. So she goes back in. They do scans, and they're like, oh, my gosh, the tumor's gone. There's not even presence that it was here. (laughs) Come on. Come on. And she's like, well, duh, I told you that. I was miraculously healed. Isn't God good? One of the methods he uses is anointing with oil. Another method that he uses is speaking or prayer. In Luke chapter 4, verse 38, it says, Now Jesus arose from the synagogue, and he entered Simon's house. But Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever. And they made a request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever. In other words, he said, fever be gone in my name. And it left her. Just like that. Immediately she arose and served them. Jesus merely spoke with authority. Imagine for the believers in here. If we were to walk around operating in that same authority that Jesus already told us, we would do greater works than even he did. Can you imagine if we were to walk around and say, migraine gone in Jesus' name, chronic stomach issues gone in Jesus' name, the miraculous that we would see. On another occasion, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, and he tells this man who's got a shriveled hand to stand up in front of everyone, including the Pharisees and the lawmakers and the haters and the naysayers. And he stands up, and Jesus says to him in the scripture, he says he looked around at all of them in Luke chapter 6, verse 10, and he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored merely by speaking. Now, I believe that the reason Jesus called this man to stand up in front of everyone was not just so he could feel his physical hand, but can you imagine this man probably spent most of his life as a societal outcast? The torment, the trauma, the isolation that he felt emotionally I believe that when God called him to stand up, he was restoring his confidence. He was restoring his worthiness. He was breaking off of him shame and isolation and guilt. He was healing him emotionally as well as physically. What's another method? By faith, yours and theirs. This method specifically, there's examples in the Bible The woman with the blood issue, you might have heard of her. 12 years, she's hemorrhaging. And just think about that for a second. Have you ever struggled with something for 12 years? She hears that Jesus is coming to town, and she's fed up, but also revved up with faith. She fights through the crowd to get to Jesus, and she knows that if she can just touch the mere hem of his garment, that she would be healed. That's a faith, like nobody's business. And in the scripture, in Matthew chapter 9, it says, Jesus turned, and he saw her, and he says, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Faith heals. In another example, there's a man who's paralyzed. And his friends are like, "Uh uh-uh, you're not going to stay that way. 
He lays on a mat. They pick up the mat. They're like, we hear Jesus is preaching at a house in town. They carry him to that house. And what do they find when they get there? The house is packed with people. They can't even get their friend inside the house. So what do they do? They're like, that's not going to stop us. They climb up on the roof. Can you imagine carrying a body up on top of a roof? That was probably no small feat. But they're like, if we can just get him to Jesus, they tear a hole in the roof. They lower him before Jesus. And here he is. Jesus looks at him. He looks at him in Luke chapter 5, verse 20. And it says, when Jesus saw their faith, not his faith, but their faith. And then what does he say? Friend, your sins are forgiven. Wait a second. Like they just brought a paralyzed man to Jesus and he's going to forgive his sins? What? He was spiritually healing him. He was addressing him spiritually first. Then what does he say? He talks about how the Son of Man has the authority to forgive sins. Then he says, stand up, my friend, take your mat and go home. He heals him physically too. That's another method is through our faith. You know, I like to think of it this way. When a farmer sows seed, he doesn't go to an empty field and just believe God to show up with a harvest. No, he puts the seed in the ground in faith. All of these methods that we're talking about in healing require faith. Jesus healed through unusual means. Hocked loogies in the mud. I heard Pastor Olin talked about that last weekend. Like he was about to demonstrate it. Jesus did unusual things. And the last one that I want to share is a process of time. A process of time. And I saved this one for last because I think this is probably one of the most difficult to walk through. We all want that instant healing. We all want somebody to lay hands. You can drop the oil wherever you want as long as I'm healed. But the process of time, like, man, that one's hard. We want this instant. We want the baked potato to stick it in the microwave. In six minutes, it's done. We don't want to wait to cook it in the oven for 60 minutes, right? But sometimes there's a process of time. In the Old Testament, there was a man by the name of Naaman. Naaman was a renowned military official. He was beloved. But he also had leprosy, a nasty flesh-eating disease. He hears about Elisha, the man of God, who had the capability of healing him. The man of God represented what Jesus does for us now in the Old Testament. So what does he do? He's like, well, I must show up and talk to this man of God, Elisha. But what does he do? He shows up with a procession, chariots, horses, bags of clothing, silver, gold, like he's going to buy his healing. And I love how Elisha responds because he doesn't even come out of the house. You can imagine he's probably like, really? So he sends his messenger and says, go tell this guy, dip in the Jordan seven times, you'll be healed. The messenger goes to Naaman, relays it, And Naaman is furious. He was expecting something radical. He was expecting that instant healing, a waving of the hand, maybe lightning to come down from heaven. After all, he's got a posse of people watching. He's Naaman. He's renowned. That's how his healing was supposed to come in his mind. And isn't that us sometimes? We're like, um, excuse me, God. This isn't what I had planned. I was believing for you to do something else. Why is my healing not come yet? And then one of, serv- one of Naaman's servants goes to him and he says, um, master, if the prophet had asked you to do something profound, 
would you not have done it? How much more for you to just dip in this water seven times to receive your healing? And I can imagine Naaman in that moment full of pride is like, well, I got all these people watching. Might as well. And he steps into that dirty Jordan River. And I can imagine that he's thinking, this is nasty water. He could have picked a different river, a clean one at least, but gosh. <sighs> he dips down the second time. And I believe that that second time and that third time and that fourth time, that there started to be a shift in Naaman. Where Naaman is probably going, you know, this disease that's been eating my flesh for years is pretty terrible. And you know, if this God is really true, maybe if I just dip in this river, maybe he'll show up on the other side. And then he dips another time and a sixth time. And by the seventh time, I believe Naaman goes under the water and he comes back up believing that the God who created him would show up with something radical. And as he looks at his skin, he sees that his skin has totally and completely been restored like that of the flesh of a child. And he's full of gratitude and he's full of appreciation, and he's full of praise. Sometimes our healing doesn't come in the method that we expect God to use. Why does God use different methods? Well, because I believe just like the pitcher, he's trying to number one thwart the enemy. He doesn't want the enemy to know how he's gonna show up. But secondly, I believe that God is like, I don't want you to be focused on the method of healing. I want you to be focused on the healer himself. God is the healer. God is the healer today. Will you guys stand up on your feet? Come on, come on. Listen, just like Naaman, Sometimes there's stuff on the inside of us that God is wanting to address. And he's saying, I need to heal you spiritually. I need to heal you emotionally. I need to heal you physically. Whatever that looks like, church, we serve the healer himself. And I believe that God is gonna show up radically today. If you're in here today and you're in need of healing physically, emotionally, or spiritually, I wanna challenge you to step out of your seat. Come down to this altar right now and let's watch God move. Come on, come on, step out of your seat. Come on, come on, come on. Your healing is right here with the healer. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep coming, keep coming. We're gonna do what the Bible says. Leaders, lay hands. Let's watch God move. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you never leave us nor forsake us. I thank you, God, that your word says, by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Jesus, you took sickness for us. You took disease for us. 
right now I want you to know the healer so I can do the works that my word says I will do. If you're in here and you'd like to receive Jesus, all it takes is a simple yes. If that's you, would you just place your hand on your heart so I can pray with you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just receive him in faith. Thank you, Lord. And church, I want us all to say this together. We're gonna say a prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus, the healer. Thank you that he died. Thank you that he rose again for me today. I receive that. I receive him as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Now, church, just stretch your hands up. Stretch your hands up. He's not done yet. Our worship team is going to finish out this song. We're going to keep believing and believing, watching God move for healing. for 12 years. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment, just like Pastor Diana said. But what I love about Jesus is that he didn't just heal her physically. He said, go in peace. Go in peace. And that's what I want you to do today. I want you to go in peace, knowing that God healed you today. Even if you have to dip in the Jordan, even if you have to just keep speaking it, keep declaring it, keep believing it. I want you to go in peace today, knowing that your healing is in process. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. You know, amen is the prayer of agreement, right? You just agreed in the name of Jesus that you are healed. Don't be walking out of here and giving strength to a symptom. Because the enemy would love for you to walk out these doors and forget what just happened. See, the process started right here. God will continue the good work. He will bring to completion the good work that he started. And I believe that's in your life. So when you walk out these doors, if you start feeling something, you say, no, 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 no. No, <laughs> devil, you have no authority in my life. By his stripes, I am healed. That's right. It's That's him right. who brings salvation to my soul, to my mind. I am healed by his stripes. 
So if you are here today and you raised your hand to receive Jesus, you began a relationship with him, we have a book for you at Guest Center. We want to get in your hands. If you're a first-time guest, we also have a gift for you. And then the last thing is baptisms are next week. If you made a decision to follow Jesus and you have never been fully immersed in baptism, it is your time. Around Freedom House, sprinkling doesn't count. You have to go down in the water as one person and come back up another. So if you have been saved but haven't been baptized yet, this is your time. If you have been saved and then you walked away from Jesus, you started living your own life, you stopped following him and you've come back, you can make a statement. You can put a stake in the ground and say, you know what, I am going to follow Jesus all the days of my life from this point forward and therefore I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to get baptized. You can do that too. All of it's at freedomhouse.cc slash baptism or if you open your phone, tap the decal. Before you leave the room, you can go ahead and sign up before you leave this space of faith. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And you are dismissed. We love you.